In the last video, we introduced the Seaman effect as this observation that in the presence of a uniform magnetic field, the spectral lines of atoms uh, split or equivalently that the energy levels of atoms are shifted by the magnetic field. We then deduced that the Hamiltonian associated with this effect uh, is as follows. And it comes about from the interaction of uh, an external magnetic field external uniform magnetic field with the magnetic moments of the spin and the orbital angular momentum. Uh, this resulted in the following Hamiltonian where LZ is the operator for the Z projection of the orbital angular momentum and SC is the Z projection of the spin uh, angular momentum. And we also mentioned in the last video that our treatment for the semen effect will depend on the strength of the magnetic field relative to the strength already experienced by the electron in the hydrogen atom. So if you recall in our treatment of the spin orbit coupling, we found that because of uh, relativistic effects, the electron experiences a magnetic field, your electron orbiting the in a hydrogen atom. And we're going to call this the internal magnetic field, B internal. Which varied like this. So it depended on the orbital angular momentum, on the distance uh, from the nucleus cubed, on the mass of the electron, the speed of light, and this, uh, this constant. We can estimate the strength of this magnetic field since uh, so the magnitude will depend on the constants as well as the magnitude of the orbital angular momentum. We know that in quantum mechanics, the magnitude of the orbital uh, angular momentum varies as h bar, the reduced Planck constant, and this is because if you if you are in a, the eigenvalues of the orbital angular momentum squared go as h bar squared l times l plus one. So this it will depend on which energy level you're at, uh, but it will always depend on the reduced Planck constant. Additionally, the distance from the, uh, between the nucleus and the electron scales as the Bohr radius. And this is because the, uh, the expected distance of an electron in the nth energy level goes as the principal quantum number squared times the Bohr radius. So plugging these quantities into our expression for the internal magnetic field, you get that it's on the order of 12 Teslas. So this sets a scale for the relative strength of an external magnetic field and allows us to break up the Seaman effect into three different situations. The first one we'll call the wick field Seaman effect. And this is when the external magnetic field is much, much smaller than the internal magnetic field. In this case, the fine structure corrections that we're going to uh, put into uh, effects due to this internal magnetic field. So a spin orbit coupling, for example, would have a larger effect than the Zeeman Hamiltonian does. 
This means that we'll be able to treat uh, our Hamiltonian as the original Hamiltonian of the hydrogen atom plus the fine structure Hamiltonian from the relativistic and spin orbit coupling corrections. This will be our new unperturbed Hamiltonian and the Zeeman Hamiltonian will act as a perturbation. And uh, this is the case, for example, for Earth magnetic field, which is on the order of 10 to the minus four Teslas. So if you wanna calculate how much the Earth's magnetic field will affect the spectral lines of an atom, you can use the treatment for the weak field Zeeman effect. There's also a intermediate field Zeeman effect. And this is when the external magnetic field is of the same order as the internal magnetic field already experienced by the electron. In this case, uh, both the fine structure effects, uh, corrections, and the Zeeman effect have to be treated on an equal footing. And we have to resort to uh, degenerate perturbation theory. So diagonalizing a large matrix. So here, the fine structure and the Zeeman Hamiltonian are treated as perturbations. And because the hydrogen atom has is highly degenerate, we have to resort to degenerate perturbation theory. Finally, our third situation is the strong field Zeeman effect. This is also sometimes called the passion back effect. And this is when the external magnetic field is much, much larger than the internal one. This is the case uh, for laboratory settings where very strong magnets can now be built. And in this case, our Hamiltonian will be taken to be the unperturbed Hamiltonian of the hydrogen atom plus the Zeeman Hamiltonian. And this will be our total unperturbed Hamiltonian and the fine structure corrections will be treated as a perturbation. Uh, for this one, it turns out that this is actually a solvable problem. And then we would use perturbation theory to add to this new unperturbed Hamiltonian or fine structure corrections. So to get a rough idea of the scales, uh, remember that our internal magnetic field is on the order of 10 Teslas. So for external magnetic fields much, much larger than 10 Teslas, we have to use the treatment for the strong field Zeeman effect. For magnetic fields on the order of 10 Teslas, we resort to the intermediate field Zeeman effect. And for magnetic fields much, much smaller than 10 Teslas, such as the Earth's magnetic field, we would use the treatment for the weak field Zeeman effect. In this course, we'll restrict ourselves to the weak field Zeeman effect as uh, the intermediate and strong field uh, Zeeman effects have certain uh, complications uh, for which uh, we, won't, we won't go into in this course. So in the next video, we'll begin our treatment for the weak field Zeeman Hamiltonian, so for very weak magnetic fields and uh, obtain an explanation for the splitting of the spectral lines in the presence of an external magnetic field.